Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is Whitfield Harrington, and I want to welcome you out to the Whitfield Harrington Show. This is a show where we take a look at the natural world, and we try to see things through a set of spiritual lenses. So as always, I want to begin with a prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you now for this discussion we are about to begin. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight on tonight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. And even those who will listen to me, O oh God, let them be covered with the blood now. And we thank you for this now, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So once again, I want to welcome everybody out. Um, and thank you all for um, being faithful listeners. Um, and I know that during this season when we are observing um, the Christmas holidays and Thanksgiving and there's a lot going on and things are changing and we're seeing um, a very unfamiliar scene unfolding around the world and a lot of times people are discouraged and it's it's the job of, of the men of God and the servants of God to encourage people but um, I, I believe the last time I was here and the last time I talked um, I spoke along the lines of sometimes God would take a road that you're not familiar with, that you don't, you know, you're not accustomed to. And when you see him doing things such as that, sometimes uh, it can put you in a mindset of distrusting God and not even realizing. And that's not a good place to be. And so one of the things I want to do is I want to encourage you. Um, I want to encourage you because a lot of the things that I hear from the Lord that comes from throne room comes from the voice of the Lord is very encouraging and sometimes the Lord has to shake and jolt me myself to remind me of the things that he said um, and one of the things that I, I kind of want to talk to you from the, the mindset is is when God is in control relax okay regardless of what the circumstances look like on the ground when God is in control learn to relax and, you know, I was in prayer today, and that was one of the things that was brought to me. When the Lord is in control, you can relax. Um, you know, when you're on an airplane, you don't get to um, dictate to the pilot how many, you know, nautical miles he can fly, what altitude he can fly at, or any of those things, or when they can serve beverages or, or any of that. You simply are <laughs> asked to sit down and to relax. And let them do the driving, and let them do the flying and managing the plane, and they will get you to your destination. Well, we're in a situation now where God is doing the driving. All right, God is taking God is taking control of the wheel, and it doesn't look like um, <laughs> to many people like anybody is driving the the plane. But rather, it's more important to understand that sometimes it can become difficult or it, it's hard to trust God when you can't trace God. When you can't corner God and figure out what he's doing, you have a tendency to, to uh, scramble. You go here, you want to hear what this person has to say. You go there, you want to hear what they have to say. And then you bring them together and to see what all of them have to say. And if anybody says anything that sounds good to you, you hold on to it. And it really becomes sort of a, 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 a game of musical chairs to where we're, we're taking people with prophetic gifts and we're trying to see who's the last man standing with the accurate word for the hour. And that's not a place that the children of God should be in. You should be in a place to where when God tells you something and you know God spoke to you, you can relax. Now, I will say this, you know, that we have to be ever so careful that we don't become addictive to prophetic voices in the midst of confusion. And what I mean by that is this. When you get to a point to where you're scrambling, trying to find a word from this person or that person, you should be at a place where you can get a word. The efforts you spend scrolling through YouTube and listening to different preachers and different things, that would be 
just is better if you were in the presence of God, asking God to speak to you and give you the clarity that you need, rather than running around, as the folks say, you know, in the South, like a chicken with his head cut off. You, you will find yourself running in circles, trying to get something from a servant of God that you yourself can get from God. Because I want you to understand something, that a lot of times, the men of God and women of God were shown things according to the level of authorization, or we're shown things according to the level that we need to know. Everybody does not have the necessity to have access to all information because a lot of times people are not focused or their ministries or their calling or their purpose is not focused around knowing everything but simply the things that they ought to know in regards to what God has called them to do. Let me give you a, a basic example. The CEO of a major corporation, let's just say downtown Chicago, he may know a lot of things about his corporations, but he may not know what time they take the trash out. It's not important to him. But if he's thrown something in the garbage <laughs> and he's trying to find it, then it becomes important. So there are things that sometimes you don't know. And it's, not, and it's okay to not know because it's not necessary to know in order for you to do what you're supposed to do. But there comes a point when you may have to intersect with someone who does know. And that way God doesn't overwork one person by giving them too much information that's, that gives them uh, access to too much information that can make the responsibility on their life too difficult because they're carrying so much weight. And so sometimes God will only share with people what they need to know. What you need to know according to your responsibilities in the kingdom, and he will give you something in part. And someone else may get another portion of what's to come. And you can only see, it can be A, B, C, and D that God is showing. And God may only show one prophet, A and C. And he'll show another prophet, just B. And the, 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 the end of it could be D, and he could have shown it to someone else. And you have to take it as God give you and basically hold on to the word of the Lord and stay encouraged. But you should not allow your emotions in this season to get out of control simply because you're not in control. Hello, somebody. Let me repeat that. You should not allow your emotions to get out of control simply because you're not in control. This is God's driving. You know, and when I look at um, a lot of the things that I, I see going on. It just takes me back to being on an airplane. I can't get out of control when, when turbulence hit <laughs> because I have no control. <laughs> I have to sit back and trust the experience of the pilots and pray at this point. And that's what's happening. This is a turbulent time period and we can't get out of control emotionally, but we simply have to sit back and pray, Lord, this is in your hands. And if you've ever been in one of those airplanes and it goes to an air pocket, oof, oh my God. You can tell you, you can be you, you, you can be very anemic in prayer, but you will develop a, a strong prayer life instantly when that plane drops about two hundred feet in one second. And that's that's an example that the Lord is putting in my spirit. Now, but one of the things I want you to know is that during this period, when something springs up, God will tell you, even when you're on an airplane and you're going through turbulence, the pilot will warn you. If they see a warning coming, they will tell you. They have the little lights that come on, bloom, bloom. They tell you to sit down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to experience some um, turbulent weather, so we just want everybody to stay strapped in. You know, and I've heard stories where people were on planes, and God be the glory, it wasn't me, and all of a sudden that the plane flipped three times. <laughs> but the people are still here. They go through all of those turbulent experiences, but yet they're still here. Um, and one of the things that I, I find amazing is that there are some of us that God has shown that this turbulence that we're experiencing was coming. So we start praying. 
because we saw the turbulence coming. We buckled in our seatbelts, fasted, and prayed because we saw it coming. And that's something that God wants you to know. And the Lord took me to Isaiah chapter 42, verses 8 and 9. He says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass. And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth. I tell you of them. Listen to that. He says, new things do I declare. So he says, when I get ready to do something new, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So whenever God is getting ready to do something new, he will give a signal. He will give an indication. He will reveal something to his prophets so that you don't have to feel like you've been stranded prophetically. You don't feel like you've been stranded by the church. So in other words, it's like I keep going back to this airplane scenario. If the pilot knows that turbulence is coming, he'll tell you. If a change of route is going to occur, he'll show it. He'll, he'll mention it. There are things that they will do to keep you informed. God works the same way. So relax. Relax. And for some of us, you know, um, I don't know, you know, my father is, is deceased. But do you know he was a, he was, he, he never got on an airplane his entire life. And he used to use the scripture where Jesus says, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. You get it? Lo. <laughs> so he never got on an airplane, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of the first time I have to um, call out one of my relatives, um, and one of my nephews, when he was um, on his way traveling to Mississippi, I guess, for some type of training, um, and he had to fly on an airplane for the first time. And he left O'Hare, and um, him and one of his buddies, and they, and they flew on this big, gigantic jet plane with all of the big engines, and they flew in, I think it was, to Memphis, Tennessee. And he was so excited, he was so impressed by the power of this mighty plane, I was assume it was a, you know, maybe a 747 or something like that. And the only problem was it was going to, I think it was Columbus, Mississippi, and, and the airline um, or the airplane that was required to get into Columbus, Mississippi, Columbus, Mississippi only has a little small airstrip. So they had to put them on one of these little small crop dusters. Now, just, just imagine you've gotten off a plane for the first time, and all of a sudden you get your luggage and you've been led across the field, and they're taking you to one of these little crop dusters, and boy, did he start. He looks around, he's like, are we getting on that? He's like, yes. He's like, no, 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 no. There's another plane over there that we can get on that look way better than this. And so he gets into this tirade where he's literally panicking. They have to weigh everybody as they get on the plane and weigh your luggage and then balance you out according to your weight when you get on the plane. And then when they got on the plane, everybody was on the plane backwards. You know one of those planes where the seats are backwards and the pilot is facing forward and now you got to do the whole trip backwards. And so here he is for the second time <laughs> about to get into the air on a crop duster plane, and he is literally panicking and breaking down. And if you knew my nephew, he is a true comedian. And so now they're sitting there trying to maintain the cool listening to him. And his buddy finally convinces him to calm down. Just relax, all right? Just relax. The pilot has this, man. They know what they're doing. It's like, okay, I'll relax. And they let him sit by the window so he could calm himself down. So the pilot rolls out to the runway. And starts up the engine. He says, oh, my God, this is not going to work. He's like, why? He said, listen to the engines, man. That sounds like two Toyota motors hanging off the wings. It's like, just calm down, boy, so we can go to where we're going. So he calms down, and they politely get out on the runway and begin to go down the runway. They're going down the runway. He looks out the window, and he notices 
that the pilot begins to lift up the front of the plane to take off and he screams, no, you don't have enough speed. You got to go faster. This is not going to work. Oh my God. And he said the plane comes off the ground and it's swerving. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, we're not going to make it. And this went on for about 15 minutes where he felt like he was going to die from being in this little crop duster plane. And I'm pleased to announce that he's not dead. <laughs> the plane made it to its destination. In fact, the pilot said to him when he got off, he says, if you ever get on the plane again, I want to make certain that I fly it because I've never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> when God is in control, sometimes it may put you in a circumstance or a situation to where it seems like <laughs> the ship is going to sink. The plane is not going to make it to its destination. But you have to learn to relax. Look at David. When David was being led to the king's throne, the pathway for him to the throne was not a smooth pathway. He was running in caves, running for his life. But yet and still, a man who was snatching lions out of the mouth, snatching lambs out of the mouth of lions and, and bears and killing Goliath, ducking javelins, in and out of wars, but yet he dies an old man, peacefully. Gone out to war, estimated about 40 times, but yet he dies peacefully after he ascends to the throne because God had directed his steps. So don't panic, relax, and keep praying because God has not changed his mind about America. Just because of what you see on the ground and you see, you know, you go from being in a seven, what is it, 747 jet to a crop duster plane, that doesn't mean you're not going to arrive at the destination that God has determined. So when we look at this, we have to continue to keep praying because I'm looking at some things that are going on. People are seeing things that are activating um, and, and, and that are coming forth where you're seeing um, fraudulent activity being caught on camera. We see all of these things taking place. And so now we as children of God, just keep praying. You have to understand, well, what did we pray? You pray as if you should always pray, as if nothing has really changed. Begin to rejoice and to thank God that his will will be done. Because when prayers grow up, it changes the atmosphere. Because when there's an absence of prayer, the enemy has his agents out busy, issuing curses and incantations. That if the court intervenes in this situation, and it doesn't go according to the way the enemy desired, then he wants to have chaos in the streets, riots in the streets. And do believe that if the court intervenes, that um, I believe, and rightfully speaking, that it will be done with deliberate speed. <laughs> A very famous two words in American history. Deliberate speed is how the courts will intervene. Because it has to be done wisely. But the children of God, the people of God, gear up. Gear up for what's about to come by staying prayed up. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you this. We have to still be sensitive to what the Spirit is saying. Because every so often, God has sent a message. He has sent a word to me. And you'd be, you'd be surprised that you'd be panicking, talking about how unstable this airplane ride is. And a God will come over the intercom system and tell you how beautiful the weather is at the location that you're headed to. And this is what's happening. Because a lot of times when God speaks to me and show me things, it's after the fact. Okay, get ready for this. Get ready for that. 
this is about to happen and that is about to happen. And you want to bite your fingernails and scream, but what about this? Uh, he's sending messages talking about something four and five months from now. So I have to encourage you because I'm encouraged today. It's it's a it's a it's a a, 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 um, a turbulent ride, I must say. All right, it's a turbulent ride, but when God is driving, just keep praying and praising Him because He knows what He's doing. He knows what He's doing. So what looks like it's supposed to be a valley of despair is actually going to become a platform of praise. It's going to become a platform of praise. And one of the things that I, I'm convinced of, and I hope I can say this accurately, Lord, I'm convinced that the devil is convinced that he knows that he doesn't have this where he thinks he wants it. <laughs> Let me say that again. I'm convinced that the devil is convinced that he knows he does not have this situation where he wants it to be. I'm thoroughly convinced of that. When I examine um, a lot of the warfare that I face from demons and satanic agents, uh, the, the inclination in the kingdom of darkness as it relates to my warfare tips their hand. And, and it just clearly shows me they're nervous. They're not convinced that the enemy is not convinced that he has what he wants right now in his hands because I, I just simply refuse to stop praying and when you find those who keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and keep praying, and keep praying it agitates and aggravates the actions of the enemy and if the enemy had the things the way he wanted them going in the way he wanted them then he would probably just leave me alone but that doesn't seem to be the case. He wasn't leave me along and the people who continued to pray. So that, you know, kind of indirectly revealed some things to me. That, oh, oh. <laughs> if you said what you say is so, Mr. Devil, then why are you doing this? It seems like you don't have your case closed. Seems like you haven't secured what you say you have secured. And that's the case. So for that reason, just relax. Relax, relax, relax. Because God has not forsaken this nation. The prayers of the righteous that God's judgment would be spared have been answered. Just relax. Keep praying. Keep rejoicing. The valley of despair should become a platform of praise. Yep. And I'm excited to say it. I'm excited to say it. I am. Keep continuing to pray for President Trump. And you know, I have to be ever so careful um, with a lot of the words that I say as it relates to a lot of um, individuals ministers and, and leaders of the world um, because by your words you shall be justified and by your words you shall be condemned um, a lot of people are sitting silent and I can understand from a political perspective you're, you're really trying to play both ends of the, um, the spectrum and you don't want to uh, tip your cards in favor of this person and and then you end up having to work with this person and you don't want to congratulate that person and then things turn around and now you got to <laughs> deal with the wrath of that person. Um, but there's coming a shift in the spirit because so many politicians who know what the law say are not advocating from their platforms for the clarity of the law to be executed. And for that reason, there's a shift coming in the spirit for those who have sat silently and pretend that they did not have the authority to act in the best interest of the people. Their authority shall be uprooted from them and given to others. 
this is what's coming from the throne. That when you're entrusted with the security and the livelihoods of people, and you're more concerned about your own seat than the lives and the livelihoods of others and the nation as a whole, even now and after you pass on, then you fail as a leader on a political level. And when you fail in a matter of a spiritual battle such as this, as Saul failed, heaven will begin to replace you. God will start submitting applications, searching for individuals. You will still be in your seat and heaven will declare your seat vacant. You will still be in your position and heaven will declare it vacant. In a new personnel, a new person will be given the authority of that seat and your job will be simply to hold it until it's time for you to get up. That's what's coming. That you're going to see almost like a game of musical chairs. Politicians being moved in and out now because of what they have done. This is the decree that's coming forth. When you sit silently <laughs> and think this storm will pass and the wind won't touch your house, won't touch your seat. So that's the word for the nation. Rejoice, for the valley of despair should become a platform of praise. And God is going to install new authorities to oversee in places where those who have neglected their duties. I'm through on tonight. I want to pray for this nation, pray for the leaders that God has chosen, that they will go into the place that God has designed for them, and that the church would shake itself and awaken and not be frightened by what we see, but maintain our faith in God at all costs. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the blessed privilege to be able to bow our heads and tell you thank you. Thank you for the word, O oh God, that you have placed in our spirits and our hearts for this nation. We ask you now, God, to remember your own word and bring it to pass according to your divine plan. You're not obligated to give us your road map, but we are obligated to believe in you, that you will take us from where we are to where we're supposed to be. We ask you now, O oh God, that you will install in places where you remove and uproot wickedness and install righteousness and that you will select the smooth stones like David selected to bring down this giant of Goliath. We rest in knowing, O oh God, that you are able to do it and that we can relax because you are in control. So we thank you now, Father, as you pour out your spirit upon us and upon the nations. We thank you for it all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, that's all the time I have for this week. And as I always say, this is a season where all of us need to stop playing and start praying. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And I'll see you again next week.